Hello everyone, my name is Anil Kokar and I am the Head of Department of Electronic and Electrical Engineering here at Trinity College Dublin. And I'd like to talk to you today about three streams in this general area between electronics and engineering and computer engineering that cover this entire spectrum from electronic systems design all the way across the software systems design. Now, being the head of electronic engineering, I'll say a bit more about electronic engineering and electronic and computer engineering, and I won't say so much about computer engineering. But just be assured that here at Trinity, um, the School of Engineering and the School of Computer Science and Statistics have come together to design this uh, curriculum, which allows you to specialize anywhere along that continuum. So, you know, I experienced the three things you probably want to know. First of all, are there any jobs in this area? Second of all, what is the area actually and how good is this place that we are talking about where you'll study this? And um, what's in this course? So first of all, jobs. Well, despite the pandemic and the situation that we all find ourselves in, the, the demand for careers and jobs in this sector uh, is still very strong. Uh, Xilinx out in the west of Dublin, uh, who manufacture reconfigurable hardware used in most of the cloud resources around the world and so much um, electronics equipment, uh, they announced major investment in research and development jobs over the last uh, few years, and that's continuing. Um, Intel acquired a company called Movidius not too long ago, and that means here in Ireland, in Intel, the careers available uh, span the spectrum from uh, electronics hardware design all the way to uh, system software design. And then Qualcomm and Quark are, are hiring quite aggressively in the area of electronics. And Qualcomm build most of the electronics that you find in your mobile phones today. And in this department, we have a strong connection with uh, companies like uh, Google and YouTube and um, you'll find our, our graduates going to those places to develop careers even now. And, and just uh, as a, a final note, Jaguar Land Rover a couple of years ago moved their uh, development operations, the electronic systems uh, operations from the UK to Ireland and um, are hiring across that entire spectrum again uh, from electronics to uh, computer engineering and electronic and computer engineering. So in Trinity, the electronics department is the number one in Ireland. The School of Computer Science and Statistics is number one in Ireland. The engineering school is in the top 100 in the world. And of course, the degree programs are accredited by Engineers Ireland. So this is a good place to study this discipline. and. Um, we are, we are delighted to look forward to the launch of our new undergraduate training building, which uh, you see there in the background called the E3 Learning Foundry, which should come on stream in the next couple of years. YouTube and Google use our technologies every day. When you look at movies, the picture enhancement technology involved there is part of what we've been working on for, for many years. And I'll say a little bit more about that later. But the point is that uh, these are just two examples of how we are connected to relevant uh, industrial research and development um, that you'll be exposed to in your courses here. Now, when I'm asked to define electronics engineering, that has become a bit more difficult in the last few years because it has become so ubiquitous. And perhaps it is better to think about it as a continuum, like I say, from circuits design and hardware design and consumer electronics all the way across to um, software engineering and software systems design. And at the heart, it's about information processing. So in a sense, what's happened in the last 10 years is people or, or, or industries have evolved to rely on a sort of um, uh, pipeline that begins by digitizing or making measurements about observed phenomena. So you turn 
some phenomenon into a digital signal or a series of measurements, and then you process that data in, um, in some way using machine learning or data analysis or signal processing. And this has revolutionized our ability to control machines or to predict events or enhanced experiences. And in fact, the, the success or our, our ability to continue working through this pandemic is because of the success of uh, video compression technology and video streaming technology and computational hardware available in cloud platforms today. Just to give you one example of um, some technology that we worked on over many years, which has been deployed in industry now, here's uh, a few frames from a, a movie um, which was recorded many years ago on film and then digitized. And the problem is to restore this film so it looks like new. And so these are three frames and we're interested in that middle frame and interested in automatically detecting and removing the little black smudges or dirt actually stuck to that film. Now it used to be that you would do this manually by uh, looking at the data in a fancy version of Microsoft Paintbox and um, just painting away every blotch. But uh, in the last uh, 10 years or so, due to the developments of signal processing, it is possible to do this automatically. And uh, in, a, in a sense, you could get a handle on, on how we could do this now. So if you think about these pictures as being composed of numbers, so each picture is con it consists of a, a whole rectangular array of numbers and every spot of brightness that you see there is directly associated with some measurement or a pixel value. Then just looking at this picture, you could see that any pixel values which are different from the next frame or the previous frame probably indicate something wrong. So this white bit here doesn't exist over here and doesn't exist back here. So it must be a blotch and, and we could deal with it. And these three frames try to show you how you could do that. So using developments in signal processing and um, video processing and machine learning, we can now estimate motion in the forward direction and backward direction. And here I've calculated the difference in color between the current pixel, a pixel for instance here, this represents the difference between that color and the color in the future. And this represents the difference between this color and the color in the past. And wherever those two differences are large, there must be a problem. And so here I've highlighted those pixels as missing. So you can see it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't do a bad job at all, but it isn't quite right everywhere. And this simple idea is not quite good enough to deploy in industry, but it gets you a, a certain way. Um, so in a sense, what I've just talked about is an algorithm. So I have modeled the signal with a mathematical model, and I didn't really talk about the mathematics. We just, I just spoke to you about it in an intuitive way, but the model is that pixel values or picture values remain roughly the same from point to point in time. And then I said, using that idea, we predict what the signal or the picture should look like in that middle frame. And then if the color that we think should be there isn't there, then it must be a problem. And then we use that same idea to try and correct the data in those parts. Now, I didn't talk about that last bit, but the point I'm trying to get to you here is a lot of the way of thinking about system design starts like this, trying to propose models or do something quantitatively to solve your problem. And once you have this solution or this algorithm, we could design a system in hardware or software or both, increasingly both, to solve this problem fast enough to achieve its goals. And in the last um, five, 10 years in particular, what has become uh, increasingly important is, is the rise of uh, automation in general, but specifically an area called deep learning, which is part of machine learning and involves signal processing. And uh, this has sort of revolutionized how people can automate tools and services. And in fact, here in Trinity, we were the first to introduce a course in, in this area here in Ireland. This is an example of machine learning applied 
to the problem of uh, restoration. So on the left is some a movie recorded in the Irish Film Center or held in the Irish Film Center. It was originally recorded um, far a long time ago in 1910. And this is our automated restoration on the right. And you can see it's more stable, it's, um, it's sharper, a lot of the splodges are gone and so on. Now this technology became quite popular and used in a lot of movies. Um, up till about 2007, 2008. And at that point, it was so ubiquitous that myself and a few of my colleagues won a science and engineering Oscar, which is a crazy thing for somebody in, in electronics to say, and people generally want some sort of evidence. So here's some pictures from the event. And uh, that's me way up in the back there. So I think one thing that you got to remember is that since about 2000, it was no longer the Cold War that was driving technology, but it has become entertainment has driven technology. So the, the, the reason for increased speed and increased um, performance and reduced power consumption in devices is, is because of people's um, need or want to play games or because you want to look at Netflix on your phone, phones must be you know, faster, more energy efficient, and so on. And, and what has happened is because of that drive to make better computational hardware, science and medical areas have started to benefit from that by using that increased um, performance to achieve some amazing things in those other areas. And in a sense, it's sort of virtuous circle. Okay, so right now, what's happened is software alone can keep up with the demand. On, on, on servers for video processing and video streaming, for instance. So hardware electronics has become very important. And all of these companies, Google, Facebook, Apple, all have hardware design teams working on media engineering and computer architecture. At the same time, you have increasing miniaturization and functionality of sensors. And this has been uh, caused a really big uh, advance in the electronic medical device industry. And here is one example, Capri Medical, a new startup that um, hosted here in electronics in Trinity. They are working on new electronic implants that interface directly with your neural impulses to suppress critical or, or su suppress serious pain or chronic pain in patients. So, okay, uh, I spoke a bit about the availability of jobs. Then I talked a bit about what electronics is and, and showed you how, how broad it has become and, and how and the discipline is probably better called electronic and computer engineering, but, but somewhere along that spectrum. Uh, and, and now I just want to say a few words about the course itself. Right? So the course structure, if you come here to Trinity, you have two years of general engineering. and by that, I mean you learn a bit of structural mechanics or mechanical engineering, uh, electronics, and civil engineering as well in those first two years. Things which are which every engineer leading design teams should know, right? And then in the third year, you specialize into electronics, electronics and computer engineering, and computer engineering. If you do a four year degree, um, then you do a, a sort of project, design project in the final year. If you do a five-year master's degree called the MAI, then you, you have the option of doing an internship in the fourth year. Now, uh, by the time you come to Trinity, you will be able to take advantage of our collaboration with Columbia University in New York. So in the third year, you can now apply to complete year five in Columbia, New York which is the number 16 university in the world. I mentioned something about internships in year four, you have that, you have that option. And this is just a small example of some of the companies that take interns uh, from Trinity. Um, I spoke about Qualcomm, Jaguar, Movidius, Intel, Xilinx, and so on before. This company, SIG, SIG Susquehanna, a really interesting company in the FinTech sector. So they work in um, high frequency trading on the stock market and they need electronics design engineers to design equipment 
to trade faster and faster. Um, and then we have uh, ABB to make uh, control systems for, for large machines and transportation like trains and so on. Um, on Semiconductor, which is sort of uh, electronics design company uh, also based here in Ireland. So this is just a little, a few examples of the many. And even now, um, companies are still taking or pro uh, providing internships for our students, um, for students to go on internship next year. And even in the pandemic, our interns are allowed to work from home for all these companies. So uh, to get in a bit more detail about what happens when you come here, um, I think I want to impress, impress upon you that the curriculum that we have designed here is quite unique in Ireland and gives you a unique exposure to many different aspects of engineering and that entire spectrum from electronics to computer engineering. So in the first year, for instance, you're exposed to uh, music technology uh, for as first year engineers to give you a sense of how electronics in particular has driven the electronic music industry over the last uh, 20 years. Uh, and this idea of science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and the arts is also part of that first year curriculum. By the time you go to the second year, you start looking a bit in a, a bit more detail at computational hardware um, infrastructure, and then eventually um, specializing in the, in the fourth and fifth years. To give you an example of a project that all first year students do here is um, uh, one of our technical officers describing students um, the design of a temperature sensor, which they will use to measure the temperature of a block of concrete as it cools. And you are asked to design the sensor from scratch, as well as work with the civil engineers to measure the temperature of the block of concrete. And this is the great thing about our program. And every year we have these projects that span that um, dimension of engineering. And eventually what we want to do is to build engineers who could cope with that, with the, the evolving technologies in terms of automation and how to survive in this age of automation. And in the second year, like I said before, we, we have we have strong connections with industries, not only in Ireland, but around the world. And um, we are quite privileged to have Oliver James, who is the chief scientist at a company called Double Negative in London. Now, Double Negative is a famous post-production company, and uh, his team won the Academy Award for visual effects for a movie called Interstellar. And he teaches second year students about modeling systems and solving differential equations using the examples from his work in that movie. And he's been um, talking to students for about four years now, and um, you will be delighted to know that he will continue into the future. Uh, in the second year as well, we have students engaged in the start of more complex electro electronics and electromechanical projects like this, um, like this autonomous vehicle project. So uh, on the right is some students having fun, but uh, on the left is the is the one of the early challenges in which you're asked to design that um, robot car and have it follow that track and, and perform certain tasks. And on the right is some students having some fun um, installing a cake on one of the cars. In the recent years, um, Jaguar Land, Land Rover have given a prize for the best um, the best buggy or uh, best autonomous vehicle project. Then in the third year, you start to, start to specialize a bit more and you start to split into electronics, electronics and computer engineering and computer engineering. Um, so, so, so here on the top shows you um, a student demonstrating the design of a clock. Um, and the clock is on the bottom right. It actually interfaces or takes a signal from the um, from the world clock, which you could read off of radio, and um, then build that display, which updates the time 
exactly. And um, this involves, you know, digital circuit design. This is a digital circuit design project, but we also have an analog circuit design project, and it involves a certain amount of bioelectronics, and you start looking at computational system infrastructures in a thing called field programmable gate, field programmable gate array design. Then in four, years four and five, you start to specialize even further. Um, and here we, we started to introduce deep learning into the curriculum in 2017. We were the first um, college to do that for undergraduates. And it's been immensely popular and has made our students have quite a good advantage in, um, in the search for jobs because um, in this course, we introduce you to the best industry practices. In this area of deep learning, you learn about how to use machine learning in uh, image classification and even in autonomous uh, vehicle driving. So students, students actually drive a, a simulator and then later on build uh, an algorithm, or a deep learning neural network that controls that simulator to drive that vehicle. Finally, in year five, if you do the master's program, um, here is uh, an example of a research project um, demonstrated by um, one of our teaching fellows, Stephen Roddy. Um, and in this project, he is controlling a quadcopter by gesture control. And this involves control engineering, um, electronic interfaces with the machine and communications and, and so on. Well, I hope that you found something interesting that piques your interest in that presentation that I've just made. Um, we are trying to build engineers who excel across that spectrum of electronics and computer engineering. We want to build leaders of teams who understand uh, electronic systems from many different perspectives. And if you want to find out a bit more about our program, you could go to those websites, that website, uh, Midas Ireland, as well as that YouTube link, has some more information from an Irish perspective about how electronics has changed over the, the last decade and how it, it covers this, this rather large area of experience. So thank you.